this is the time for giving gifts and saying thank yous. To spread the cheer far and wide, I'll be knocking up a whole bunch of delicious edible prezzies. Come on in and feel the warmth. As well as making tasty treats that come from the heart and fill the belly, if somebody gave me this for Christmas, I would be thrilled to bits. I'll be throwing a big beefy thank you party for all the canteen staff. I'm going for the ultimate roast beef with all the trimmings. Hey! And lining up rows of herrings. You're looking at a pile of herring sperm. <laughs> Still. <laughs> While Tim goes clubbing with wild bunnies. It could all go horribly wrong, couldn't it, really? We come to the end of our seasonal journey through a year at River Cottage. A little drum roll for the onions there. Oh, blimey. You're answer insane ooh, 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 look at that it's delicious as the year comes to a close the days are getting colder wetter, shorter and darker. All good reasons to make sure that this is definitely the season to be jolly. And what could be jollier than making some yummy edible presents? And so I've asked Baker Dan and Pam the Jam to help me rustle up some sweet treats for all the family. We're retiring to our kitchen grottos to be busy little sweet-toothed elves. Here's something you can knock up in 10 minutes flat that's guaranteed to bring joy to anyone who likes a bit of chocolate. And do you know anyone who doesn't? These are my 10 minute chocolate chunk cookies. I'm using two types of sugar, half golden caster sugar and half soft brown sugar for that slightly syrupy taste in the cookies. It's going to be a pretty hefty batch of bickies. So I've melted 500 grams of butter over a gentle heat and it's thoroughly mixed with 700 grams of sugar. Four eggs go in, along with four caps of natural vanilla essence. In goes 600 grams of plain flour, and it's all mixed to a sticky dough. I want to make a batch of plain chocolate cookies and a batch of milk chocolate cookies, so at this point I'm going to split my mix. And the secret of proper choc chunk cookies is to have proper sized chunks of chocolate, of course. Dot dessert spoonfuls of the mixture onto your baking sheets, allowing a good bit of spreading room between them. Then bake in the oven at 190 degrees for 10 minutes. Cookies are go-go, look at that. And there they are, my 10 minute chocolate chunk cookies. Meanwhile, Dan is staking his baking reputation on a rather more sophisticated chocky bicky. I want to do something a little bit different. It's a little German cakey biscuit thing called Pfeffernus. With their punchy spice blend, cloves, cinnamon, mace and lots of pfeffer, I reckon this is a man's biscuit. Loads and loads and loads. A mixture of eggs, butter and honey is added to the spicy flour. It smells amazing. It's the smells of Christmas. Um, clove is really strong. After resting for an hour, the mixture is rolled into balls and baked for 15 minutes. By way of a final festive indulgence, Dan's filling his pfeffernoose with plum jam and dipping them in melted chocolate. Meanwhile, Preserve Supremo Pam is planning to transform a modest winter forage of chestnuts into a festive favourite beloved of mums everywhere, Marron Glacé. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without chestnuts. I'm doing this just in a cross so that when they're cooked, the water and the heat will get inside that shell and I can peel them quite easily. To transform mealy chestnuts into melting sweetmeats, blanch and peel them, 
Then cook them for 30 minutes in a simmering syrup flavoured with a split vanilla pod. Then leave to cool. Dip each chestnut quickly into some boiling water and then into the, the sugar syrup. And it's back onto the baking tray. Then dry overnight in the oven on the lowest possible heat. Mmm, and fragrant, crunchy and quite divine. Delicious treats like these cost a fortune in the shops, but next to nothing to make yourself. And anything you buy will never taste quite as wonderful as something made at home with an extra spoonful of love. And that's a message I want to share. You know what? I think a little bit of quality control is in order. Goodness me. It's a whole grown-up and sophisticated cake. That is quite something. These are Pam's Marron Glacé and they look beautiful. The sort of sugar coating makes them look snow frosted. Oh. They dissolve in the mouth. It's incredibly sweet and yet you get that full chestnut flavour at the same time. Wonderful. After all that hard work, I can't quite let these go for nothing. Although I think there's a generous spirit of giving behind our little plan to take these goodies to Axminster Market. Because all cash raised will be going to a good cause. River Cottage Sweet Treats fundraising. Don't Have be shy. Time. Have a little taste of our biscuits this morning. Festive biscuits. Festive biscuits. One yeah. for you and one for you. you. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoying that biscuit? If I go carefully, otherwise I shall go home without any teeth. Very nice. A couple of evenings in a warm kitchen, merrily making edible goodies, certainly beats a guilty last-minute rush around the shop. There you go. Well done. Well, bless you. Thank you. Do you like the biscuit? There's a packet for each of them. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you, darling. Hugh, you can have one of those if you can spell it. Pfeffernoos. Oh, for goodness sake, I'm having it anyway. <laughs> It's too good to miss. Coming up, I'm out to prove that our salad days are not yet behind us. I'll be farting like a trooper all night. And I get Bill Tong tied as Ray shows me how to do the beef jerky. Bill Tong or Ding Ding, I think it's a ding dong success. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Perham is one of a disappearing breed. A Cornish fisherman who catches herrings with a traditional drift net. The season runs from Michaelmas to Christmas. In the hope of a fresh herring breakfast, I've got up early. Very early. It's 5.30 in the morning in the North Devon fishing village of Clovelly. I've come to meet Stephen at his home, a rather classy address for a man of his trade. Stephen. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Is now a good time to go fishing? Now before it gets too light. All right, yeah. let's do it. Also, get on. At this time of year, the herring, or silver darlings as they're affectionately called around here, come to the sea's edge to spawn. So, the herring shoals come right into the shore, is that right? That's right. Yeah, they spawn on the rocks here. Uh, as the light's changing, they'll move off to the light. Eh? Stephen nets the herrings as they swim out towards the rising sun, a technique that goes back centuries. My family have been here for about 200 years now. And how many herring boats were here going way back? The high heyday of it. There was about 80 boats fishing down the Clavelli, eh? And how many boats left doing this now? Two of us now, really. Just the two Just of you? Two of you. But in terms of your impact on the herring population, I guess you're, you're barely scratching the surface, just a couple of boats. And when you compare it to the big push stainers and, and trawlers that are catching tons and tons to a time, you're not going to get much more sustainable than this, are they? Dawn's breaking, and I'm feeling ravenous. I haven't had much kip, but I could certainly murder a kipper. It's a herring. First of many? You never know. We've got another one coming up here now. Hey! Well, I wouldn't say they're coming thick and fast, but starting to look like breakfast anyway. 
And you know what? We've covered the bottom of the basket. A couple of dozen now. Like all fishermen, Stephen has good days and not so good. But it's a great day for me, as I've never held a fresher herring in my hand. I feel quite passionate about this little fish. It's such a fantastic food, and it's played a huge part in the history of the British fishing industry. But it's also been roundly abused through industrial fishing, ending up in fish meal, pet food, and even in fertilizer. And what I love about these Clavelli herrings is that every single one of them is going to be eaten by a person, and a grateful one at that. And that's something to celebrate, so why not a festival? Lovely Clavelli herrings, silver darlings, pressure to see the best you can get. And today is the annual Clavelli herring festival, which welcomes the return of the herring shoals and all who come to revel in a bit of herring history and gastronomy. Herring potted in a local pot. Now that's lovely. And it's cooked in cider. Yeah. Hint of mace? Yeah, hint of mace. Delicious. With a herring of potatoes. Yes, with pink fur potatoes. Ooh, great combination. Beautiful. <laughs> What's the secret of your cure then? Good marinade. 24 hours at least. Good marinade. That's not exactly giving away the ingredients, is it? <laughs> well, I was going to say, you could tell me, but you'd have to kill me, is that it? <laughs> Most of us are familiar with.